Hello and welcome to worship with us here at the Salvation Army Bells Hill Corps. It's hard to believe that we have now reached the first Sunday of October. Autumn is really beginning to make its presence felt. Only the most hardy have not yet put the central heating on. The nights are drawing in and it is easy to allow our mood to reflect the season. So here is a psalm to lift our spirits this morning. Psalm 42. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. My soul is downcast within me, therefore I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mizar, Deep calls to deep, in the roar of your waterfalls, all your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day the Lord directs his love, at night his song is with me. A prayer to the God of my life, I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning? oppressed by the enemy. My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. And so we start our service this morning by singing words of praise. Praise my soul, the King of heaven. To his feet thy tribute bring. <laughs> I love the pictures of the psalmist creates for us in the, in the psalm we've just read a few minutes ago, especially in verse 8. But each day the Lord pours his unfailing love upon me, and through each night I sing his songs, praying to God who gives me life. It reminds us of a personal relationship we have with our Heavenly Father and the importance of communicating with our Creator God who gives me life. So why is it we struggle so much when it comes to prayer? What is prayer? How should we pray? Attention, everybody. Please be quiet, for I am about to pray. 
you do realize that I am an expert in prayer. I should say in the art of prayer because it is indeed an art. Not everyone knows how to pray, but I do. God Almighty, victorious, gracious and faithful, here I am once again, your humble servant, bringing my supplication before you today, supplicating earnestly and honestly with integrity and wisdom. Grant your servant riches from your benevolent and restorative heart, omnipotent and omnipresent God. Amen. Jesus says, when you pray... Do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go to your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. You know, Lord, all about the situation I'm in, I simply cannot pay the gas bill. And that's because I had to lend Joey five pounds last week and he hasn't paid me back yet. And then it was my mother's birthday and I had to buy her a present and any old present just would not do. It had to be an Abercrombie, Abercrombie and Fitch sweatshirt in pink with flowers on the front. And that nearly emptied my bank account. And then of course I had to buy a bottle of coke a two litre bottle of coke well if I'm honest it was two bottles of two litre bottles of coke to take to my friend's party and then I had to take my dog to the vet because it had fleas oh they were everywhere even on my bed because I can't help myself letting the dog get onto my bed I know occasionally though even though she doesn't make a mess she does make a mess she does make a terrible mess of my sheets anyway the vet cost an absolute fortune and now I can't pay my gas bill Oh no, amen. Jesus says, when you pray, do not keep on babbling on like the pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. You may wonder why I'm not praying. Well, the answer is, don't need to. God knows everything without me telling him what I need. So why bother praying? Jesus says, ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. It's 10.30am Sunday morning. Time to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those that have sinned against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Mm. Jesus says these people honor me with their lips but their hearts are far from me. How do you pray? Has it become words of habit, or is it from the heart? Is it a list of requests rattling off a few please and thank yous, hoping God will hear and answer them? Or do you take time to really come before God to search and know his heart? In Matthew's Gospel from chapters 5 through to 7, we have a whole load of Jesus' teachings clumped together that we know as the Sermon on the Mount. In chapter 6, we find Jesus' teaching on prayer. Following on from a list of how not to's, Jesus said, Pray like this, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Hey boys and girls, it's Sally time again, and it's good to see you Sally. You look like you survived your week on the desert islands. 
So what did you get up to? She says she had time to think about God. Mm, and she wants to know what God is like. Well, what do you think God is like? She thinks he's like a policeman. Why a policeman? Oh, because he wants to make sure that policeman makes sure that you're a good girl and you keep all the laws and tells you off when you break the law and you think that God is the same. Well, I don't think God is like a policeman. He's not looking down from you from heaven, waiting to punish you whenever you do something wrong. No, he did give us a set of rules to live by and, it's very, and he's very sad when we break them. What about Father Christmas? Okay, so now you think he's like Father Christmas. So how do you work that one out, Sally? Because he's got beard and he gives you gifts. Well, Father Christmas has beard and he gives you gifts, that's sure. But to be honest, I'm not sure if God has a beard or not. I don't really know, to be honest. And he doesn't always give us what we want, but sometimes he just gives us what we need. It's not good for us to get things that we want all the time. But he does promise that he'll supply all our needs through Jesus. So one more try. What do you reckon? A teddy bear? You think God is like a teddy bear? Why is that, Sally? Where on earth did you get that idea from? <laughs> because you imagine him being warm and cuddly. Well, God does promise that he will be there for us and comfort us, especially when we're feeling sad or lonely or, or feeling a little bit, little bit blue. But you know, Sol Sally, God is so much more than a policeman or Father Christmas or a teddy bear. Jesus, Jesus told us that when we talk to him, we should call him our Father in heaven. He said, our Father because it, he's yours and he's mine, which reminds us that we're all part of the family of God. That's right, Sally. Jesus loves us and God loves Jesus and he loves you just as much as he loves Jesus and cares for each one of us exactly the same. So why is he in heaven? Well, Jesus did say he was in heaven I guess in one way it stops you thinking or getting confused with your dad who is here on earth. It reminds us that God is extra special. He's not restricted by all the things that we are here on earth, but is all powerful, all knowing and can be everywhere all at the same time. I know, wow, it does blow my mind too. Yes, I'm glad that God is my heavenly father too, Sally. I think it's time to say goodbye for now, don't you? We'll say see you the next week. Bye.
we have heard a little already of how our Father in Heaven reminds us that we are all part of the family of God. But what exactly did Jesus mean when he said, Hallowed be thy name? The most common type of prayer we pray is almost like we really are treating God as Father Christmas. It is our natural tendency to come to him in prayer with a long list of things, armed and, you know, lists with requests and pleas. We want him to just answer. Whether it's for our world, those on our prayer list or families or even ourselves, we rush straight in to pray with little regard for the Father himself. Yet Jesus taught us when we pray to commence our prayer with our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed, before we say anything else, ask for anything. We put God in his rightful place. As R.T. Kendall in his book on the Lord's Prayer writes, the Lord's Prayer is given to teach us primarily to seek God's face not his hand. Seeking his hand is to ask him to do this or do that. Seeking his face is to honour his personhood, his character, his heart and his own agenda. How many of you can remember your, your children rushing in from school and their first words were, you know, I'm starving, what have you got to eat? No, not hello, How are you? Just a demand for a need to be met immediately. By praying, hallowed be thy name, we are focusing completely on God and for just a moment are not concerned for our own desires. But more than that, we are focusing on a hallowed God, a holy God. To Jesus, this was second nature, of course, when we get the occasional glimpse of of heaven from scripture this is exactly what we find look at Isaiah chapter 6 in the year that King Uzziah died I saw the Lord high and exalted seated on a throne and the train of his robe filled the temple above him were seraphim each with six wings with two wings they covered their faces with two they covered their feet And with two, they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of His glory. Then in the book of Revelation, we find John, talking of the throne in heaven, describes the four living creatures, he writes, in the center around the the throne were four living creatures and they were covered with with eyes front and back the first living creature was like a lion the second was like an ox and the third had a face like a man the fourth was like a flying eagle each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under its wings. Day and night, they never stop saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. To hallow God's name is to honour him as holy. We may have the familiarity of in calling God Father, but we must also come to him in prayer, with awe and respect, and give him his rightful place. Over the next few weeks, um, as part of our time of worship, uh, we've asked various members of the congregation to choose their favourite song, and just to say a little bit about why they've chosen it. So this week, I'm delighted to ask uh, Ernest and Helen Hamilton to share their favourite song with us today. When asked to give our favourite song, Helen and I said we have so many from the founder song 509, O Boundless Salvation, to song 707, 
I need thee every hour. Over the past few months, like most of you, we wondered when and if we would ever get back to normal life. It has been a trying few months for us all, but our faith has kept us strong. And with that in mind, we have chosen song 525, especially for the chorus. Give us faith, O Lord, we pray, faith for greater things. This song was written in the 1930s by General Albert Osborne, but still very relevant today. Our prayer is that when this is all over, we shall unitedly say with a certainty the words of verse 3. Every comrade, Lord, we pray, thou wilt richly bless. Lead us forth into the fray, one in holiness, one in faith and harmony, one in perfect charity. Then we know that we shall see even greater things. <laughs> Deny thy father and refuse thy name, or, if thou wilt not, be but sworn my love, and I'll no longer be a Capulet. Shall I hear more, or shall I speak at this? Tis but thy name that is my enemy. Thou art thyself 
though not a Montague. What's a Montague? It is not hand, nor foot, nor arm, nor face, nor any other part belonging to a man. Oh, be some other name. What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. So, Romeo, would, were he not Romeo called, retain that dear perfection which he owes. Without that title, Romeo, doff thy name, and for that name, which is no part of these, take all myself. Thank you. I can now tick that off the bucket list. <laughs> I can only apologise to all Shakespearean fans that uh, had to witness that. Uh, however, it does link nicely as we continue to look at the opening line of the Lord's Prayer. The romance of Romeo and Juliet was hindered by their family feud, and Juliet, frustrated by this, declared that Romeo, carrying um, the name of Montague, should make no difference. What's in a name, indeed? Today, in our Western world, we may spend some time choosing a name for a newborn, but normally it is out of preference. Our name establishes our identity rather than telling us anything about our character, if you like. Yet, in ancient times, a person's name was, was very important as it closely related to what he or, sh or she was. Abram was changed to Abraham, meaning father of many. Simon's name was changed by Jesus to Peter as he declared, and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Moses, as the burning bush, said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. Exodus 14, verse 16. God's name signifies God himself. It stands for God's revealed character, his essence, his attributes. The Psalms portray this beautifully in Psalm 8, verse 9. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Psalm 115, verse 1. Not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory because of your love and faithfulness. And in Psalm 9, verse 10, those who know your name trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. When all around us in uncertain, uh, it is a comfort to know that the name of God, what the name of God stands for, revealed in Jesus, coming full circle, if you like, the name of God is revealed in his Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus, who is the Word made flesh, the one through whom God uniquely speaks, revealed the Father's name, the Father's character. He did this first by what he said, by proclaiming him as Father and encouraging us to do the same. Our Father, Hallowed be thy name. And then, by his own life and character, full of grace and truth, John 1, 14. Jesus prayed to his Father, declared, I have made your name known to them, John 14, 26. Jesus, talking about the Pharisees and the teachers of the law of his time, quoted Isaiah, saying, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. When we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, we are saying that we are a child of God 
and that our lives glorify our Heavenly Father by our holy living. In this way, we show that we are children of our Heavenly Father. As Thomas Watson, the Puritan, put it, we are, when our lives shine, His name shines in us. Children of our Heavenly Father, may we hallow the name of God in all we say and do this day. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time of worship where we can each focus in on you and give you the worship and adoration that you deserve. And in doing this, we each receive from you, knowing that your mercies to us are new every morning. We praise you for the gift of your redeeming Son, Jesus, who shows us that there is no depth so deep that your love can't reach us. We pray for our fellowship, different folk in our fellowship, who perhaps are unwell today, those who just feel down at the moment. Lift them up, O Lord. And we just pray the words of that song. It is Jesus I need. It is Jesus indeed who will make my faith beautiful and bold. And with Jesus in me, I need no longer be so afraid of what future days may hold. In you alone is hope. And so we pray on, believing, trusting, and in confidence. Amen. Well, thank you again for joining with us in worship this morning and uh, joining with us in our new series about the Lord's Prayer. Now we're going to say a benediction. Let there be love shared among us. Let there be love in our eyes. May now your love sweep this nation. Cause us, O Lord, to arise. Give us a fresh understanding of brotherly love that is real. Let there be love shared among us, let there be love. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance 
his support, his approval upon you and give you peace. Amen.